evening and welcome to church tonight. We're going to sing together, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a fellowship, what a joy divine. Sing it together. What a fellowship, what a joy divine. Leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine. song together. I am weak, but thou art strong. Jesus, keep me from all wrong. I'll be satisfied as long as I walk. Let me walk close to thee. Just a closer service this evening. So glad that you've joined with us tonight, this Wednesday night, a time of gathering together around the Bible and praying with one another, praying for one another. I hope we're being faithful in that. I just want to uh, give a couple of announcements before we uh, get on into the service today. First of all, our Sunday morning, Sunday morning church service. Uh, services are at 9.30 and 11 o'clock. We've been observing the a through L for the 9.30 service and the M through Z at the 11 o'clock service. But we're not going to observe that anymore. Just want you to come at your preferred service time. And so whichever one fits in best with, uh, with you and uh, your family, uh, I encourage you to come and be there for that. Also, uh, after our Sunday morning dismissals, I want to encourage our folks to continue our procedure that we started, I know we want to stop and congregate and fellowship, but uh, we need, when dismissed from the auditorium, we need to flow on through the uh, foyer and onto the parking lot to our cars. Again, that's not the situation that we are usually used to as a church, but we still get to be together. We still get to spend uh, time worshiping the Lord together, and although uh, everything is not normal, there is some normalcy uh, to, uh, to practice that I believe that, that uh, we, uh, we can. And so let me encourage you to do that. Don't congregate in the foyer uh, at all. And then Saturday morning, we have our soul winning. We're starting back soul winning. We're going to be meeting at 1030 
Saturday morning at the Albertsons uh, McDonald's parking lot there on 128th Street exit. So you get off 128th Street and you turn west and there in about, oh, probably three-tenths of a mile on the south side of 128th, you'll see Albertsons and McDonald's. And we'll be over there in the parking lot uh, there. And so we'll have prayer together. There'll be areas for us to go. We'll be inviting people, knocking on door, backing up from the doors, inviting folks to church. We'll have gospel tracks. We'll ask them if they would like to have a gospel track. Uh, by the way, we have new tracks printed also that will be available. And then uh, we will, um, you know, uh, try to witness to them, encourage them to be saved and uh, start a, an, our outreach effort back. And so if you'd like to come to that, we'd encourage you to do so uh, promptly at 1030. We'll pray, pair up, and then we'll go into the neighborhood uh, uh, visiting. Let's pray together this morning and uh, ask God uh, this evening and ask God's blessings on our service. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the word of God. We thank you for your people. And Lord, I just ask that you would just move in our hearts tonight as we teach the word of God. Help us to believe the Bible. Help us to um, cleave to its teachings, its truth. Help us to maintain our confidence in you. And you are our Lord. You are our God. And uh, Lord, we need you desperately every day. And so help us tonight as we gather together as your people. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Take your Bibles, if you would, this evening. Turn to Psalms chapter 37, the book of Psalms chapter 37, very familiar passage of Scripture. We continue our study on your health and mine. And then this is lesson number six. And the title is How to Have Victory Over Worry. How to Have Victory Over over worry. Psalms chapter 37, I'm just going to read three verses. Verse 1, the Bible says, fret not. That's talking about worry. Don't worry. Uh, there is a command against worry in the Bible. The fact is, it is restated many, many times in the, in the Word of God. Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. Drop down to verse 7, if you would. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. And then we look on down one more verse to verse 8. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. How to have victory over worry. Worry is probably the number one sin in the lives of God's people. It is a sin because God commanded us to not do it. And so if we do it, we are sinning against the Lord. It very well may be the number one cause also of physical difficulties. No wonder there are so many commands in God's word to fret not because it'll kill you. It shortens our lives. Worry's no friend to the abundant Christian life and it's no friend to our body either. It affects the nervous system and can cause numerous disorders, phobias, panic attacks, and more than, than just that. It affects the cardiovascular system. It can cause rapid heart rates, uh, heart rates and palpitations, high blood pressure. It affects the digestive system, stomach aches, nausea, loss of appetite. It weakens the immune system, leaving us more susceptible to illnesses. It affects the respiratory system brings about shallow breathing. It causes headaches. It uh, brings muscle tension, insomnia, and more. And by the way, this is what Mayo Health Clinic says. Wor worry is hazardous to our health. 
And please don't misunderstand me. No one can live without worry. Um, Nobody can be absolutely, completely free of worry 100% of the time. We're flesh. We're depraved creatures. But we can lessen our worrying a great deal by applying Bible instruction and exhortation. Some people say, well, Pastor, I'm just a worry wart. You have anybody in your family that's a worry wart? You have anybody in your family that seems to do all the worrying uh, for everybody else? Well, I want to say the Bible teaches us that worry is a sin. And to be a worry wart is really admitting to a fleshly addiction. An addiction not talked about too much a destructive addiction that will adversely affect you both physically and spiritually. And so it's not the Lord's will that we worry. So we really need to deal with this enemy of our faith, an enemy of living the victorious Christian life. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love, and of a sound mind. So that spirit of fear which causes one to worry didn't come from God. You say, so where did it come from? Well, the world, the flesh, and the devil. Where did it come from? The world's influence upon our lives. The world is not necessarily, if you please, a spreader of good news. You ever notice that? You ever notice how you can watch the six o'clock news and most of it's bad news, right? Right? And then it seems like maybe you'll you'll watch it several days in a row and many things are making the news. And, of course, most that makes the news is negative things. And and, and then finally they'll say, they'll have a segment that says, uh, well, just uh, lighten up a little bit. And then bingo, there's your one little bit of, of, of news, good news, that that they want to insert. But, but, but by and large, the world's influence. The world's no splitter, spreader of, of a good, good news. Uh, or the flesh, we've caved into our fleshly weaknesses. Or satanic temptation. And we've succumbed to temptation. Satanic oppression, we've succumbed to oppression. But, but, but you know, whether it's the world, the flesh, or the devil, uh, you and I, we still have a free will. We can choose to do what God said do in order to battle against worry and have victory over worry. And so God didn't give us the spirit of fear, uh, uh, but uh, I'll tell you what, what he did give us. He gave us power, his power, God's power to overcome sin, to overcome self, to overcome Satan. God's given us the spirit of power. God's given us the spirit of love. A love and devotion for the Lord. A love for God. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and all thy strength. Strong affection and desire to please Him. God has given us a spirit of love, a spirit of power, and the spirit of a sound mind. A spiritual mind, not a carnal mind, but Christ likeness uh, in our in our mind. The, the, the mind of Christ is what the Bible talks about. And so, with those things in mind, God hath not given us the spirit of fear. And what God has given us, I want to give us four things tonight, and uh, how we can have victory over worry. Number one, turn, if you would, in your Bibles to Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6. The book of Philippians uh, chapter 4 and verse 6. And I want to say, first of all, follow God's formula for prayer. Follow God's formula for prayer. You know, we are to pray about everything. And so when we say, yes, pastor, I'm a worrier. Yes, pastor, I prone my reflex is to worry, worry and fret, then have faith in God. 
Well, follow God's formula for prayer. Pray about this. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, be careful for nothing. That word careful there is talking about not fretting. Don't worry about things. But in everything, underline those two words, everything. By prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And so we're not to worry about anything. But God says, tells us what to do about everything. Uh, he says about uh, prayer. That's asking. That's asking. Ask God for victory in that area of your life. Supplication. That's pleading. You, have you pled with the Lord? Do you plead with the Lord? Do you continue to plead with the Lord about this area of worry? Thanksgiving. By everything, in prayer and supplication and thanksgiving. A, combat, a, 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 a way to combat worry is with gratitude. When you're tempted to worry, when we're tempted to worry, let's think of something to thank the Lord for. Let's be a grateful people. Let's count our blessings. Let's begin to praise the Lord for His goodness. But in everything, by prayer and supplication and thanksgiving. And then he says, let your request be made known to God. Give him a list. Make your request known, your prayer list. Hey, put worry on your prayer list. That's a prayer request. Let your request be made known unto God. Now listen, worry warts. Have you prayed about your worry addiction? Have you prayed about that worry addiction? Have you pled with the Lord? I mean, earnestly, fervently, faithfully prayed every day about that sin. And when we worry, confess it. And then yield to the Holy Spirit and trust God's power for victory. There it is, God's formula for prayer, how do we win over worry? Now, you, you can't leave out what God says, verse seven, if we do this, and the peace of God, oh my goodness, an indescribable peace, the peace that passeth all understanding, and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts, it'll protect your heart, and minds through Christ Jesus, what a wonderful promise. What a wonderful promise the Lord provides for us in prayer. He talks about the peace of God. Don't worry. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts. How to have victory over worry. Number one, follow God's formula for prayer. Number two, flood your thoughts with virtue and praise. Flood your thoughts with virtue and praise. You know where I'm going, don't you? Same passage, Philippians chapter four, verses eight and nine. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Things. Now, here we go. We got another list. We got another list. Now, we got a prayer list. Worry is on that prayer list. But then we have another think list. Boy, it's a list on purpose. So many times our thought life is provoked by things that slipped in unawares, as it were, and found lodging. And begin to stir in our hearts and cause anxiety and fear and worry. The Lord says, no, now you need to have another list. Whatsoever things are true. That's the heading. True. What's true? What's truth? And boy, I tell you, that's a big list. Fact is, you could write down Bible verses on that list. Uh, there are only 41,173 of them. And certainly there are many that would speak to our hearts, many that would 
take our mind off our worries. Rescue, if you please, our minds from worry. Renovate and rehabilitate our minds instead of worry. I mean, sometimes people write down motivational words. Sometimes they'll write motivational words and they'll put on their mirror in the bathroom. Well, there are only 774,746 words. I, I counted each one of them this week and just wanted to give it an accurate count. That's not so. I, I didn't do that. I found that in the book. Uh, 774,746 words. I mean, certainly there'd be a word, living words, Holy Spirit inspired words, words that go beyond the brain, sink into the heart, minister to the whole body, soul, and spirit of man. And so, what sort of things are true? Man, there, 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 might, be, there might be thousands of words in the Bible just right now. One word, boy, it's truth. It spurs the mind, it, it quickens the mind, it motivates the soul and spirit to serve the Lord and be faithful in our minds uh, to Him. And so, boy, these words, these verses, this truth, other things represent truth. Set them in your house, put them on your mirror, on, in your car, at work, have a verse of the day you memorize, put it on the refrigerator, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Why? Because of a big problem. It's a national problem. It's a worldwide problem. Worry. Worry. And so the Holy Spirit is speaking of a, a flood, a tsunami of virtuous praiseworthy thoughts filling our minds on purpose. And by the way, this is only a part of his prescription for worry. We've got number one, follow God's formula for prayer. We need to pray. Number two, we've got flood our thoughts with virtue and praise. And by the way, when we do that, verse nine says, those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do and the God of peace shall be with you. Both promises. God's talking about peace. So many people have so much anxiety stored up in their minds and hearts and fretting and worrying about things. It's not the way a Christian is supposed to live. A Christian is to live with the peace of God with us, influencing our minds. And uh, so many miss out on, on that. Follow God's formula for prayer, number one. Number two, flood, flood your thoughts with virtue and praise. Number three, fellowship with those who love God's people. Fellowship with those who love God's people. And I'll turn you to Psalms chapter one on this, the book of Psalms chapter one fellowship with those who love God's people. And I think that's so vitally important, so necessary for our Christian lives. Psalms chapter one, verses one and two. I taught this just a few weeks ago in our Wednesday morning service, but I want to give you kind of a little bit of a different slant right now. Psalms one, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Now we'll go ahead and read verse 3. Because the Bible says, And he should be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. This is talking about the, the blessed man, the happy man, the happy Christian, uh, the happy believer. And fellowship is so important. Fellowship with those who love God's word. I think in these Two verses, verses one and two, you find four things that mold the life 
of a person. Four things that mold the life of a person. Verse 1, counsel. Counsel. God's talking about, listen, blessed is the man. Okay, happy. God, said, God is saying here, I, I, I want to talk to you about your happiness. You know, people who worry aren't happy. People who worry all the time are on edge. The peace of God's supposed to be ruling in our hearts. God wants us to be happy. He wants to be trusting in Him always. Four things that mold the life of a person. No one counsel. The ungodly or the godly. You make the choice. God said, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Uh, better be careful about that. Not just careful, better do what God said. Number two, crowd. Crowd. Nor standeth in the way of sinners. Who's your crowd? Man, thank God for the church crowd. Thank God for church membership. Thank God for church fellowship. Who's your crowd, sinners or saints? On down here in the passage, the ungodly or the godly? Who's your crowd? Now, now the crowd will mold the life of a person. And counsel is one of these things that mold the life of a person. Number three, conversation. Nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Uh, who do you listen to? Scorners or encouragers in the Lord? What do you listen to? What do you allow to go in these ears? Uh, truth, honest, just, pure, lovely, uh, or gossip, lies, falsehoods, evil reports, whisperings, on and on. And, and, and that, that molds a person. That affects a person's life. Listen, you, 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 uh, you listen to the conversation of the scorners and you'll end up being a scorner. This affects your life. Four things that mold the life of a Christian. Number one, counsel. Number two, crowd. Number three, conversation. Number four, con the content you read and see. Verse two. But his delights in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. The content you read and see. And by the way, God suggests that we read much Bible. We read much Bible. The law of the Lord. It's meaningful. Great meaning. It brings great meaning to light. Delight. delight. His delight is in the law of the Lord. Do you delight in the law of the Lord? Do you delight in it enough to read it today? Do you delight enough in it to, to let the Lord speak to you through His Word today? brings meditation. It's, it's, it, it, it's, it's material we ought to meditate on. In our psalm study, we're talking about the word selah. It means think about it. Boy, read the law of the Lord. And it's just not read it and done. Not, not, not one and done, one chapter and done, one verse and done, but it's a read it and think about it. Read it and selah. Read it and meditate on it. Muse on it. And then God gives us a model for reading the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate that day and night. And meditate, pondering, pondering it day and night. Well, this book needs to influence our lives greatly. And we listen to a thousand voices besides the voice of the Holy Spirit. We spend much more time listening to those voices than the voice of God. And... Uh, and God says these are the things that mold a life and make a happy Christian. How to have victory of worry. No one, follow God's formula for prayer. Number two, flood our thoughts with virtue and praise. Number three, fellowship with those who love God's word. By the way, you can laugh at this. You can sneer, about, sneer at this and continue on in your worry. But as you do so, you're mocking God. You're making it, this is God's prescription for worry. 
If you want victory over worry, I'd follow, I'd follow the book if I were you. Number four, how to have victory over worry. Ready? Find that merry heart. Flip, uh, Proverbs, turn to Proverbs 17, 22. Proverbs 17, 22, very quickly. Proverbs 17, 22. You know the verse, first part. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine. I like that. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine. Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 13. A merry heart maketh a cheerful countenance. Oh, we need that merry heart. Verse 15, Proverbs chapter, 13, uh, Proverbs chapter 15, verse 15. Uh, look at the last part of the verse. But he that is of a merry heart hath a continual feast. Uh, back over uh, in James, you don't have to turn there. James chapter 5, verse 13. You might want to write it down. Uh, James, is, uh, James writes on the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Find, dear Christian, how, how to have victory of worry? Find that merry heart. It's a medicine. Oh, yes, it is. It's a medicine. It doeth good like a medicine. Man, a merry heart's a medicine. Now, by the way, that's just not from biblical truth. And by the way, it's all we need. But it's also been proven in, uh, in study. As far as, as, far as a scientific study goes. Proverbs 15, 13, 15, it talks about a, a cheerful countenance. It says a merry heart maketh, notice that word, maketh, a merry heart maketh a cheerful countenance. And then in verse 15, he that is of a merry heart hath a continual feast. I think that's a, it's a celebratory spirit. Man, when I think about feasting, I think about celebrations, right? A celebratory uh, uh, spirit. And then James chapter 5, verse 13, a singing spirit. Is there any merry? Let him sing songs. And, and so find that merry heart. It, it's a medicine. You, you need it spiritually. You need it physically. It'll affect your countenance. It will, it, it, it will bring cheer to your life in a celebratory uh, spirit. Uh, it'll, it, it will give you a singing spirit. Now when the Bible speaks of a merry heart, laughter is not necessarily the main thing it's speaking of. But it sure is not leaving it out. I think it's good to laugh. I think it's important to laugh. Uh, I'm, I, I'm certainly not talking about laughing at sin. Uh, the scientific studies would just talk about laughter is what they would do and uh, wouldn't necessarily talk about the material that's being laughed at. I think if you laugh at sin and you laugh at dirty jokes and shady jokes and lewd things and if you laugh at filthy language and wicked, wicked subject matter, uh, I, uh, I, I believe that brings much harm to your to your life. I believe it brings much harm to your body. There's nobody that's going to laugh at sin and think sin is, is funny and think sin is good entertainment and, and be any better before God or be, better, uh, be any better in their, in their body, in their physical well-being. But I'm talking about good, clean fun. I'm talking about good, clean fun. I'm talking about humor. I'm talking about laughing at things that are funny. I'm talking about I'm talking about smiling. I'm talking about chuckling. <laughs> and then I'm talking about a good old belly laugh. And then, you know, uncontrollable laughter. Have you if, and I know you have, but hopefully all of us have. We've every once in a while we pass across something that just strikes us unusually funny. And, and, and the best ones are not just when it strikes us unusually funny, but there's somebody to share that laughter with. It's like two of us, and we get tickled at the same thing, and you just cannot stop laughing. It's good for us. It's good for us. M listen, medically speaking, laughter is a powerful form of stress relief. Merriment of heart 
is good for us physically. It enhances our intake of oxygen-rich air. It, it stimulates the heart and lungs and muscles. It increases endorphins. Endorphins are, are chemicals that are released in the brain uh, that uh, relieve stress and pain and, and also give a relaxation effect. And so, dear Christian, hey, lighten up. You, you folks who walk around all the time and think it's not spiritual to laugh. You, listen, you're missing great blessing in the Christian life. Laugh a little, laugh a lot, smile, sing, be cheerful. Have a cheerful spirit, a celebratory spirit about life. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Rejoice evermore. Listen, it's not only good for a Christian to do that spiritually, it's good for a Christian to do that physically. Corey Ten Boom, I'll end with her. The statement she made. She is a dear Christian who suffered much at the hands of Nazi Germany. Corrie Ten Boom was a godly Christian lady that hid Jews in her house. There's a book on it. It's called The Hiding Place. And uh, during the oppression, persecution of Nazi Germany, and they were out to exterminate the Jews and killed millions and millions of the Jews. Corey Tim Boom took it on as a ministry, if you please, to hide the Jews and did so in her own house. Finally, one day, uh, they found out what she was doing, where she was doing it. They took her, they put her in a Nazi concentration camp. And the story goes on. Much malnutrition, uh, physical needs, that were not met, persecution, just terrible, terrible things that she endured. But she made this statement about worry. And the statement is, worry does not empty tomorrow of sorrows. It empties today of strength. And in tune with the Word of God, that would be spiritual strength and that would be physical strength. Worry does not empty tomorrow of sorrows. It empties today of strength. We as God's people need to have victory over worry. Not, not that we're above worry. Not that any of us at all would never worry. That, that's the goal. But that when worry comes, we take the Word of God and we implement it in full force to chase away the temptation of Satan, this world, and this flesh. And we set our minds exactly where the Lord Jesus Christ told us to. Let's win over worry. Father, we thank you for our time together tonight. Holy Spirit, move now as we look into God's, as we share the request that have been sent in. And Lord, just help us to pray one for another. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. All right, well, we're going to look over our weekly prayer list um, before we go to the Lord in prayer. And uh, we'd like to mention Miss Maria Pennington. Uh, she'll be undergoing infusions uh, for the next three weeks to help uh, build bone. And uh, so we'll be praying for her. Uh, Miss Mary Ings, um, she's doing well. She's thankful uh, for all of our prayers. And she has finished up her radiation treatments, but we'll continue to pray uh, for her. Uh, Miss Nanita Letton, she has a frozen shoulder and then a follow-up appointment uh, for cancer, and that appointment will be in August. And so let's be in prayer for her. 
Of course, remember Brother Wall, uh, Les Wall, uh, still experiencing much fatigue, and uh, so praying for his health, and of course for he, uh, he and Miss Wall um, there. And then Miss uh, Rebecca Gwaltney, uh, she's awaiting results uh, from the neurologist appointment uh, that she had, so continue to pray for her. Uh, and then Pat to uh, Toenhes is undergoing surgery Monday uh, to replace a pacemaker. And so a pretty serious surgery there. Um, and so we'll be praying for them during that time. Of course, I want to mention again that uh, Miss Anastasia and Ray had their baby. Uh, Raymond Henry B. Craft V uh, was born, and that was on July the 20th. He was nine pounds, one ounce. And so we'll continue to pray for a uh, healthy mother and baby. And then, of course, uh, the rest of our um, uh, mother, expecting mothers, and that'd be Danielle Dorschel, uh, Miss Molly Hollinshed, Miss uh, Dana Thornburg, and Haley Frias, and so continue to pray for them uh, as well. And then um, under miscellaneous requests, uh, Lisa Smith, a friend of uh, Pastor and Miss Cox, uh, will continue to pray for her. Um, she's in critical condition and uh, still in the hospital, and so be praying for her. Uh, and then Donna Olson, uh, recovering from COVID-19, that's Justin Olson's grandmother, and then of course his uh, grandfather, uh, grandfather Jim Olson, recovering from heart valve replacement. Uh, so we'll continue to keep them in our prayers. Uh, Toby Bishop, uh, recovering from hip repair surgery. This is uh, a co-worker of Miss Susan uh, Kolbs, and so I'll be praying for them. Uh, Miss Myrtle Irvin uh, has an unspoken uh, prayer request. Um, we'll continue praying for Michael Willen uh, as he's recovering in the hospital from very serious uh, car accident. Um, and then uh, Miss Doris, she's recovering from surgery uh, to repair five stress fractures uh, in her lower back. That's also a friend of Miss Linda Welcher. Um, and then Rick Romero and family uh, pray for them in the comfort, uh, in, for comfort in the passing of his wife Karen, and that is Amy Romero's father-in-law. Um, and so be praying for them. And then with our missionaries, um, of course Ben and Becky Turner have been praying for them for a couple weeks now about their building, um, and they're up in uh, Canada there and uh, British Columbia, and they've lost their previous building um, before they got into COVID-19, or that they were in before COVID-19, and so they'll be needing a new building to meet in once they're able to meet together again, so be praying for them. And then our missionary of the week is the Reed family there in uh, Thailand, and uh, they're doing a good job and a good report, but of course, as we mention each week, even the missionaries around the world uh, are still experiencing uh, the struggles and, and need wisdom to wade through all of this as the COVID-19 uh, affects just what they are able to do and uh, and lead in those areas and so we'll continue to pray for them and as we do let's pray together uh, tonight father we love you and god i thank you so much uh, for your mercy for your grace for your love for your care and uh, lord you're just so good to us and uh, you never stop being good and uh, i just thank you for our church i thank you for the people that make up seattle baptist church and and lord just being able to be a part lord help us to be faithful help us to to be faithful to you uh, number one and uh, and then to your cause to your church and reaching people with the gospel lord help us to be faithful to lift up others in prayer and uh, lord i thank you for those that we do have again in our family that we have here at church and uh, lord think of miss maria pennington um, i pray that you'd be with her help her as she gets those injections and fusions there uh, for her bones to grow stronger and uh, and lord we pray for miss mary ings uh, that she continue to get better and with her health that she continue to move move forward and uh, thank you that she's been able to uh, to get through each step along the way and you've been there for her thank you for that and uh, Lord just think of Miss Nanita Letton uh, that you'd help her uh, with her shoulder I pray that you'd uh, if it, Lord if it be your will there in August as she has that uh, appointment uh, that she would uh, that everything would be come back fine and um, and Lord just help her to know that you're with her the entire time uh, I pray you give her comfort and uh, give her um, just a a mind and a heart that's calm and rested in you in your will um, pray for the wall family Lord and I pray that you'd help brother wall I know it's been a long time now especially even with the COVID-19 God that he's been home not able to get out as much and then uh, with his health at 
uh, isn't easy and I pray that you'd help him to recover uh, pray you'd help miss wall and with her health um, and then Lord just help them together uh, to get through this give them strength that only you can give I pray I pray you'd give them your grace and help them through this time what an encouragement they've always been to all of us and uh, I pray you'd help us to be the same to them uh, in your strength Lord pray for Miss Rebecca Gwaltney pray you'd help her and uh, heal her um, and then Lord I pray that she'd be able to get good results back from the neurologist that would be a help uh, to her and uh, and her life uh, Lord pray for Pat as he goes uh, to replace the pacemaker God I pray you'd be with the surgeons uh, the doctors those making critical decisions uh, I pray that you'd give them wisdom and understanding uh, I pray that all would go well and that uh, that they'd uh, he'd be able to recover from that uh, that surgery and be better off for it uh, Lord think of Miss Lisa Smith and uh, I pray that you'd help her to heal and uh, to recover be able to get out of the hospital and uh, make steps in the right direction pray for uh, the Olsons uh, Donna and uh, and her husband and I pray that you'd help them help her to recover from being sick and and uh, then Jim that you'd help him to recover from the, the open heart surgery and Lord I pray that they'd be able to get back to back to normal and uh, I pray you'd help them and during this time as they're getting back to normal uh, Lord that you just give them your grace and uh, help them and uh, I pray that they'd be a know you're there for them and that other believers and family would be uh, there uh, gathered around them uh, Lord pray for Miss Myrtle and her unspoken I know many of us have unspoken prayer requests that are somewhat personal and Lord I pray that you just work in all of our lives and in a way that um, that only you get the credit for you get the glory for and our hearts would be more towards you and even others who maybe don't believe in you would see that and you'd be glorified and honored uh, in that and thank you so much that you can take any circumstance any person and get the glory for it and uh, and and people could see Jesus through it all and thank you for that help us again just to be faithful Lord thank you for our missionaries who've been faithful and and other churches around our country who've been faithful serving you living for you being a witness being there for one another loving you walking with you I pray that you'd help uh, uh, the Reed family as our missionaries of the week there in Thailand. Thank you for the good report and to be with them and their family. Help them, give them wisdom and, uh, and strength during this time. And, uh, and Lord, that they'd um, be able to see fruit for their labor. And Lord, keep them and their family safe. And uh, be with the Turner family. I pray you'd work and that they'd be able to get a building and something that'd be even better than what they had before. And that it would definitely be just you that did that and got the glory for it all. You're so good to us. And Lord, even in our country, you don't know all the details of what's going on, uh, but you do. And this is no surprise to you. And I thank you that you're the God that uh, knows it all, knows every bit of it from the beginning to the end. And Lord, you give wisdom. And I pray you'd help us as a church just to follow you, to follow your word, to get take this as a time to get more and more rooted in the word of God. And uh, thank you for it. I pray you continue to bless our church, help our pastor, give him wisdom as we move forward here in our area as a church. I pray you keep our church safe, healthy, and uh, help us to uh, be on fire for you, to live for you each and every day and take every moment, uh, not to take every mo any moment for granted, but to thank you for it. And Lord, we love you. Thank you for the opportunity we had now tonight to gather around your word, to pray, to sing to you. And uh, thank you for it all. I pray you bless it all. And bless the rest of our night. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm.